This part, bonus episode, inside the craziest meeting of the Trump presidency. Now, I I would say citation needed. I'm sure there were crazier meetings. I really do believe that, especially in the beginning and as people were fired, like when Flynn was fired the first time and uh, the stuff that was going on in that. Like, okay, so four conspiracy theorists marched into the Oval Office. It was early evening on Friday, December 18th, more than a month after the election had been declared for Joe Biden and four days after the Electoral College met in every state to make it official. How the hell did Sidney get in the building? White House Senior Advisor Eric Hirschman grumbled from the outer Oval Office as Sidney Powell and her entourage strutted by to visit the president. Trump's private schedule hadn't included appointments for Powell or the others. Former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn, overstock CEO Patrick Byrne, who of course uh, had an affair with Maria Butina, the Russian spy. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Colleen, for becoming a patron. Patreon.com slash House Sparks. Thank you for reminding everybody. Um, And thank you for making a splash in the the tip cup, in the tip jar. Um, Bless you. Um, (laughs) Over Patrick Byrne and little known former Trump administration uh, official Emily Newman. But they'd come to convince Trump that he had the power to uh, take extreme measures to keep fighting. As Powell, by the way, uh, um, one, two, let's see. Yeah, so it was... I will say about this group that marched in there, um, it was uh, on a, at least on gender parity. It was uh, it, it was uh, you know firing on all cylinders. Pretty amazing, two dudes and two women. So you know, fifty fit. There you go. As Powell and others, I'm just saying, there's some fairness and equity going on. As Powell and others entered the Oval Office that evening, Hirschman, a wealthy business executive and former partner at Kazowitz, Benson, and Torres, who'd been pulled out of quasi-retirement to advise Trump, quietly slipped in behind them. The hours to come would pit the insurgent conspiracists against a handful of White House lawyers and advisors determined to keep the president from giving in to the temptation to, inver- to invoke emergency national security powers, seize voting machines, and disable the primary levers of American democracy. Hirschman took a seat in a yellow chair close to the doorway. Powell, Flynn, Newman, and Burns sat in a row before the resolute desk facing the president. For weeks now, ever since Rudy Giuliani had commandeered Trump's floundering campaign to overturn the election, outsiders had been coming out of the woodwork to feed the president wild allegations of voting fraud based on highly dubious sources. We've covered a bunch of this stuff. Um, Trump wasn't interested on on governing. Um, uh, It's just a bunch of these people hanging out. Powell began the meeting with the same baseless claim uh, that now has her facing a $1.3 billion defamation lawsuit. Um, uh, She did respond to this. In response to a request for comment, Powell said in an email statement to Axios, I will not publicly discuss my private meetings with the President of the United States. I believe those meetings are privileged and confidential under executive privilege and under rules of legal profession. I would caution the view- readers to view mainstream media reports of any such conversations with a high degree of discernment and a healthy dose of skepticism. That's an admission, I would argue, as a uh, reader and a viewer of mainstream news. Uh, I, that's what you know falls into the non-denial denials zone of things. She said all this stuff. It's all, that's the, that's the kind of thing you write when you're shocked that they know exactly what was said to the point. Oh, good Lord. See what I mean? Thanks for buying the pullover, the Zoltan hoodie. See what I mean? That scared the shit out of me. (laughs) So, oh, good Lord. I'm all right. I'm fine. Oh, my God. Lord of mercy. I have to, hold on. I have to turn down the alert box or it's going to kill us all. That's amazing. (laughs) <laughs> See what I mean? I was in the other room and I was like, but God. Um, uh, so uh, thank you for buying those, you guys. I don't mean to be, uh, to, you know, not show appreciation. I truly do. <laughs> um, okay. Powell waved an affidavit from the pile of papers in her lap, claiming it contained testimony. And by the way, that since that's a link, let me open that in a new tab and we'll get to that in a second. From someone involved in the development of rigged voting machines from Venezuela. She proposed declaring a national security emergency, granting her and her cabal top secret security clearances and using the U.S. government to seize Dominion's voting machines. Hold on a minute, Sidney, Hirschman interrupted from the back of the Oval. You're part of the Rudy team, right? Is your theory that the Democrats got tougher and changed the rules or is it that there was foreign interference in our election? Giuliani's legal efforts, while replete with debunked claims about voter fraud, had largely focused on misconduct by corrupt Democrats. It's foreign interference, Powell insisted, then added, Rudy hasn't understand what this case is about until just now. 
And I don't think he's present in this one. In disbelief, Hirschman yelled out to an aide in the outer oval, Get Pat down here immediately. Several minutes later, White House counsel Pat Cipollone walked into the oval. He looked at Byrne and said, Who are you? <laughs> it's the, I'm, the, I'm the overstock CEO. I slept with a Russian spy who's now in jail. <laughs> Who are you? The meeting was already getting... By the way, that factors in later. Good Lord... The meeting had already, was already getting hit. White House staff spent weeks poring over the evidence underlying hundreds of affidavits and claims of voter fraud promoted by Trump allies like Powell, as did I, by the way. The team had done the due diligence and knew the specific details of what was being alleged better than anybody. Time and time again, they found Powell's allegations fell apart under basic scrutiny. Now, well, that's a little rude. I wouldn't call my show basic scrutiny. Thank you, Annie, for becoming a year-long patron. Thank you so much, Annie. Um... <laughs> Fall, fell apart under basic scrutiny. Excuse me, I do more than basic scrutiny here. I'll have you know, it's basic, well, it's, it is basic scrutiny, but it's sprinkled with charm and humor and, and uh, the, the occasional, um, but, not, but increasingly rare <laughs> fart sound effect. So, but Powell, fixing on Trump, continued to elaborate on a fantastical election narrative involving Venezuela, Iran, Jungwa and others. She named, how do you like that? I'm just saying I pronounce them all properly. She named a county in Georgia where she claimed she could prove that Dominion had illegally flipped the vote. Hirschman interrupted to point out that Trump had actually won the Georgia county in question. So your theory is that the Dominion intentionally flipped the votes so we could win that county. Let me run that by you again. She named a county in Georgia where she, she claimed... She could prove that Dominion had illegally flipped the vote. Illegally flipped the vote. Yeah, that's a great idea. We should do a re reenactment of this. I think that's a great idea. I'll write out the parts like a script. And, and uh, oh my God. I'm for it. Um, Hirschman interrupted to point out that Trump had actually won the Georgia County in question. So she said they flipped the votes. They'd illegally flipped the votes. And he said, so your theory is that Dominion intentionally flipped the votes so we could win the county. Oh my God. It gets better from here. As for Powell's larger claims, wait a minute. Why are you, why, why would you even move past that part? What part of this where you're just you're like, what kind of, how is there not just like a giant record scratch in the sky when somebody and everybody, all right, everybody out, get them, <laughs> get out. Mr. President, they flipped this, the votes in this county. We won that county. Shit. Everybody out. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like Eddie Murphy in trading places. Just, you know, you know what I mean? Get the fuck out. <laughs> This was a stone groove, my man. Yeah, whatever, man. Get out. So, as for Powell's larger claims, like, that wasn't large enough. What the hell? I just love that. I, I mean, seriously, I am so here for that. Just, to, oh, God. <laughs> as for Powell's larger claims, uh... He demanded she provide evidence for what, if true, would amount to the greatest national security breach in American history. They needed to dial in one of campaign's lawyers, Hirschman said, and Trump campaign lawyer Matt Morgan was patched in by a speakerphone. By now, people were yelling and cursing. <laughs> the room was starting to fill up. Trump's personal, by the way, hashtag the best people. Can you imagine being Trump sitting there watching these people scream at each other? And siding with the dumbest people in the room. Oh, God. The room was starting to fill up. Trump's personal assistant summoned White House Secretary Derek Lyons to join the meeting and asked him to bring a copy of a 2018 executive order that Powell's group kept citing as the... Uh, oh, crap. Why is my other screen sleeping now? Don't do that. Come back. Um, uh, was the power, Like, this is the one that would allow him to do martial law and all kinds of other crap. So... Lyons agreed with Cipollone and other officials that Powell's theories were nonsensical. Yes, well, yeah. Uh, you think I, I think he loved the screaming, but I also know that he doesn't know what's going on half the time. So Trump is sitting there going, 
like it's hard to know who you're siding with. Oh my god. Craig, thanks. I'm going to have to change that sound so they don't wipe us out. Thank you, Aggie. Um, the Swedish Kronar are always welcome. Uh, hello to the, the great and powerful Swedish people. Stop trying. Oh, my God. Aisle 13. Thank you. This is getting a little crazy. I'm going to. Oh, good Lord. I've got to turn the audio down on the speakers just so we don't get doomed by this. That's amazing. So, okay. It was now four against four. This is awesome. Flynn went berserk. The former three-star general, whom Trump had fired as his first national security... Oh, thank you. Those are actually really cool. The zero one one cups. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> the former three-star general, whom Trump had fired as his first national security advisor after he was caught lying to the FBI and later pardoned, and to, uh, allegedly to Pence, which was a lie, stood up and turned from the resolute desk to face Hirschman. Oh, God, this is great. This part is so fun. You're quitting! You're a quitter! You're not fighting! He exploded at the senior advisor. Flynn then turned to the president and implored, Sir. So, first, by the way, confirmation of a sir story in history. We've got a real sir. Sir. In that thing? Yeah, it's like, it's a Black Friday sale. Absolutely. A, a, <laughs> sir. Sir. We need fighters. Hirschman ignored Flynn at first and continued to probe Powell's pitch with questions about the underlying evidence. All you do is promise, but never deliver. He's starting to quote Alex Jones now. He said to her sharply, Flint, Flynn was ranting, seemingly infuriated about anyone challenging Powell, who had represented him in his recent legal battles. Finally, Hirschman had enough. Why the fuck do you keep standing up and screaming at me? He shot back at Flynn. If you want to come over here, come over here. If not, sit your ass down. This is my favorite. Flynn sat back down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Anonymous. These are pretty sweet, I gotta say. I designed that one myself. I did that, I did that drawing. I you know it's not a lot, but it's a little. Um <laughs> Oh God, this is so good. Sit if not, sit your ass down. Flynn sat back down. <laughs> Oh, God. The meeting had come entirely off the rails. Byrne, backing up Flynn, told Trump the White House lawyers didn't care about him and were being obstructive. Sir, this is the, this the Overstock CEO guy who slept with Maria Butina. Lost his job. In fact, stepped down as CEO of Overstock.com and was, I, I, I personally believe, I have no evidence to back this up. Rudy, if you're watching, this is how it's done. I have no evidence to back this up, but it is my feeling that he was one of the people in the Q world that was uh, attacking Wayfair as being part of the child pedophile ring kind of thing like that. That um, because Overstock was his company, Wayfair is a direct competitor. So he used the QAnon accounts and that stuff to feed Wayfair, um, uh, you know, fake news into the feed. Um, sir, we're both entrepreneurs. Get the what? And we both built businesses. No, he didn't. He's not an entrepreneur. He owns the company his dad started. Entrepreneurs. The former Overstock said, We know that there are times you have to be creative and take different steps. Different steps. You know, normally you would do democracy. But right now, not democracy is the different step. This was a remarkable level of personal familiarity given it was the first time Byrne had met... Oh, thank you, John. Um, you guys... You're going to make me blush. And I'm already tan enough right now. Um, <laughs> Byrne kept attacking senior White House official. Uh, um, uh, sorry, kept attacking the senior White House uh, staff in front of Trump. They've already abandoned you, he told the president aggressively. Periodically during the meeting, Flynn or Byrne challenged Trump's top staff, portraying them as disloyal. So do you think the president won or not? Uh, psst, not. Turn up the speaker audio. You like it? Okay. Um, if I turn the speaker audio up, people will buy more things. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, uh, is that the marketing ploy? I love it. Yeah. My, uh, oh, Mike Pillow's not in on this. This is he wasn't even invited. He's you got to understand about Mike Pillow. He's he's like fifth string. Thanks, anonymous. Well, right on. Look at a Zoltan mug. 
Good one. I have one of those. They're sweet. Um, <laughs> this is so weird. I feel like Rachel hawking her book. So uh, at one point, Flynn, uh, Flynn, at one point, with Flynn shouting, Byrne raised his hand to talk. He stood up and turned around to face Hirschman. You're a quitter, he said. You've been interfering with everything. You've been cutting us off. Do you even know who the fuck I am, you idiot? Hirschman snapped back. Yeah, you're Patrick Cipollone. Bird said, wrong, wrong, you idiot. Oh, God. <laughs> You're Patrick Cipollone. <laughs> <laughs> You're Patrick. So this whole meeting where they've been screaming about how they know more than everyone else. <laughs> they've been screaming. At each other. And the whole time this dude thought he was Patrick Cipollone. Like the rest of us don't give a crap. But he's supposed to be. It's Cicciolini right. <laughs> the staff were now on their feet. Probably applauding that. I just. I have to say. <laughs> you're dummy number 33. The, the, when he went. Wrong. It, like. Do you even know who I am you idiot? Yeah you're Patrick Cipollone. Wrong. The whole staff was like. That's beautiful. That I gotta say that I was in a room where that happened. To that's just <laughs> on their feet. <laughs> oh God! Uh, <laughs> Trump was behind the desk watching the show. He briefly left the meeting to wander into his private dining room. <laughs> Can you just imagine in the middle of these assholes fighting over him? Yeah. No, he would never leave to fart. He would just fart and then leave. Like he'd fart through a cracked door and shut it behind him. <laughs> I can't. Do you think they even noticed he was gone? <laughs> The usually mild-mannered lions blasted the pal said, You've brought 60 cases, and you've lost every case you've had. Oh, God. Trump came back into the Oval Office from the dining room to join, and then rejoin the meeting. No word on if he had a Diet Coke and some, yeah, and a, and a, fish, and a fish delight. <laughs> lions pointed out, to, they had to bring him back up to speed, pointed out to Powell, that their incompetence went beyond their lawsuits being thrown out for standing. You somehow managed to misspell the word district three different ways in your lawsuits, he said pointedly. Oh, God. Which, I mean... <laughs> we all said that they wrote the United States District Court, Northern District of... Eastern District of Michigan. Like, clearly... He didn't, she didn't misspell it. That's QAnon code. Letters added and letters removed clearly affect the math. Um, it's part of the great illusion to make everybody, it's a rope, it's an intellectual rope-a-dope to make everybody think you're dumb. Patty, all right, thank you. Um, you have to, uh, my only rule is that if you get the tank tops, you have to work out in them. I do. I'm going to post a picture tomorrow um, uh, or uh, Thursday when I go work out um, with uh, wearing the Zoltan tank to work out in. I, I'll bring it. Oh, God. I, you can't. This is so fun. These are sloppy spelling errors, but given that these lawsuits aim to overtake, uh, overturn a presidential election, the court nomenclature would have uh, should have been pristine. You think? Powell, Flynn, and Byrne began attacking lines as they renewed their argument to Trump. There they go again. They want to focus on the insignificant details instead of fighting for you. The insignificant details of the Kraken. That was the Kraken, for Christ's sake. Ah. Uh, so, um, you can't find the sweat yet? What, Laura? Please tell me you meant shirt. Um... You, there's two ways to order the shirt. In the, it's pinned in the chat on YouTube, or you can go to Twitch uh, to the stream there. Um, can't stop lying. If you could put the the Twitch merch link up, that would be awesome. The Kraken is lacking. Trump replied, "No, no, he's right. That was very embarrassing. That shouldn't have happened." <laughs> this is all about like 
it, again, what have I told you? You cannot shame Trump. You can't. You can only embarrass him. And if you embarrass him, that's when it gets bad. I mean, he literally was ready to drop their whole argument because they misspelled district three times, and he it, he became he was. Um, what am I reading? I'm reading the Axios article entitled. Um, this is the part of their series, but it's uh, inside the craziest meeting of the Trump presidency. This is when they were trying to, you know, uh, talk him into using their, you know, the the Powell team was fighting his in, in-house lawyers. You heard a little bit about it, but this is the most expanded um, version of it. The Powell team needed to regroup. <laughs> I just have this picture of them just bloodied and stuff like, fuck this. He got me in the ribs with those three misspellings of district. I think I'm, I think I'm bleeding out. Um, they shifted to a new grievance. Gee, when do they do that? <clears throat> to turn the conversation away from their embarrassing errors. Powell insisting that they hadn't lost the 60 odd card cases since the cases were mostly dis- dismissed for lack of standing and they had never had the chance to present their evidence. Well, guess What? You lose a case if it's dismissed for standing because it is your responsibility as the filing attorney to prove you have standing to file the fucking case. Jesus, this is dumb. If you lose for standing, you lose for one of the most basic reasons. If you don't get... If somebody... like, If you lose a civil case... Because you couldn't explain why you have the right to bring a civil case. That is the worst part of being a lawyer. Thank you, Francie. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) so this was their fallback. Every judge is corrupt, she claimed. We can't rely on them. The White House lawyers couldn't believe what they were hearing. That's your argument? Even the judges we appointed? Are you out of your fucking mind? (laughs) Um, may I, I, uh, if I was sitting there, I would have gone, ahem, uh, mark me down for, uh, 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 yes. Powell had more to say. Really? How odd. She and Flynn began trashing the FBI as well and the Justice Department under Attorney General Bill Barr, telling Trump that neither could be trusted. Both institutions, they said, were corrupt and Trump needed to fire the leadership and get in new people he could trust. Cipollone, standing his ground amidst this mismatch of conspiracy theories, said they were totally wrong. He aggressively defended the DOJ and the FBI, saying they had looked into every major claim of fraud that had been reported. Flynn and Powell had long nursed their antipathy to the FBI and justice. Flynn had pleaded guilty in 2017 to lying to the FBI, um, uh, but withdrew after hiring Powell as attorney in June 2019. Um, Largely because that was Trump communicating through Powell that he was going to it was he was going to pardon him the two alleged the fbi had entrapped that's amazing jenny thank you so much i'm 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 uh, i'm overwhelmed today i really am by the number like this is new this is a new experience oh good lord ah oh, thanks al that's a good name for something uh, right on. Well, pics of you using and wearing would be lovely if you guys want to post that to my Twitter account. That's really nice. Um, <clears throat> Hirschman, known inside the White House as a defender of Barr and the DJ, went off, uh, DOJ, went off on Flynn again. Listen, the same people that you're trashing, if they didn't produce the Brady material to Sydney, your ass would be in jail. <laughs> it, is a, it is T-shirt Tuesday. That's a great idea, Mark. Brilliant. We'll do that from now on. Maybe that's the thing. (laughs) Oh, God. Wrong, you idiot. Wrong. It was no longer technically true that Flynn would be in jail as he had received a post-election pardon from Trump. Well, he would have been in jail or would still be in jail. Um, But this was the this is where they thought they could get him out. So, yes, it would. He it is. It was technically true because under his assumption, Hirschman working in the White House with Trump, they wouldn't have been able if they hadn't uh, um, produced the Brady material for Sidney for him. Then they wouldn't have had a reason to to get him out. Their their whole reasoning it would have been more politically dangerous in theory. <clears throat> but Flynn was furious. Don't mention my case. He roared, roared. 
Hirschman responded, where do you think Sidney got this information? Where do you think it came from? From the exact people in the Department of Justice that you're now saying are corrupt. So basically, one of the things that we're finding out in this little thing is that Trump and the DOJ helped get Mike Flynn out by slipping them information. In the midst of all this craziness and this friggin' Muppet Show BS that they were doing, just screaming and flipping out at each other, we find out in this that that Trump's DOJ was slipping um, his attorney other information so that they could push back against stuff and to help, which, by the way, didn't ultimately help because they had to they had to pardon him. He was found guilty. Um, Byrne, wearing jeans, a hoodie, and a neck gaiter, piped up with his own conspiracy. <laughs> Yeah, what, what was that? I'm sorry, Antifa in the back? I know how this works. I bribed Hillary... Oh my God, RBA girl. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, that, that might be a first, the first Zoltan hat. That's sweet. Um, they're, I think they're embossed. It's nice. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna... This, so. Oh my God, you guys. Felicia, thank you. Way to represent with the logo. Um, Byrne, wearing jeans, a hoodie, and a neck gaiter, piped up with his own spirit. I know how this worked. I bribed Hillary Clinton $18 million on behalf of the FBI for a sting operation. Oh, Francie, there you go. That's the gator I'm talking about. Um, listen to this. Hirschman stared at the eccentric millionaire. What the hell are you talking about? Why would you say something like this? Something like that. Byrne brought up the bizarre Clinton bribery claim several more times during the meeting to the astonishment of the White House lawyers. This, this isn't... Like, this is l ludicrous. This, uh, all of this. Like, that. that's just, like, insanity. And he's lying in front of the president and to everybody else. That didn't happen. That did not happen. He did not bribe Hillary Clinton $18 million on behalf of the FBI for a sting operation. And if he did, it was an attempt and she didn't take it because she was never charged in an $18 million sting. What are you, what the hell? Hirschman, what the hell are you talking about? Why would you say something like that? <laughs> he sounds hurt. Oh, thank you, Grant. Um, I'm going to have to start, I'm going to have to write my own metal stings from now on just to vary them up. Um, Trump, for his part, also seemed perplexed by Byrne, but he was not entirely convinced the ideas Powell had, pr were presenting were insane. Like, look at this. Seemed perplexed. Perplexed? He didn't know the dude. But he was not entirely convinced the ideas Powell was presenting were insane. He asked, you guys are offering me nothing. These guys are at least offering me a, a chance. They're saying they have the evidence. Why not try this? The president seemed to truly believe the election was stolen and his overriding sentiment was, let's give it a shot. By the way, for the record, um, where is it? Um, where? Are, that's me. Um, nope, that's the wrong one. Is this the one? Nope. Crap, it won't come up. Hold on. Um, this whole thing, he's using the, uh, that argument now. His lawyers are going to argue that the election was stolen. That is their primary, like he found two lawyers who are willing to go in there and argue that, that that's his belief. That is his sincere belief. So, uh, the words martial law were never spoken during the meeting, despite Flynn having raised the idea in an appearance on the previous day on Newsmax, a right-wing hive for election conspiracies. But this was a distinction without a difference. What Flynn and Powell were proposing amounted to suspending normal laws and mobilizing U.S. government to seize Dominion machines around the country. Powell was arguing that they couldn't get a judge to enforce any subpoena to hand over the voting machines because all the judges were corrupt. She and her group repeatedly referred to the National Emergencies Act and a Trump executive order from 2018. So, um... <clears throat> Let's uh, let's take a look at uh, let's see. This is the um uh, we're not I'm not no no ABC you don't get to um 
signed a broad executive order that would pave the way for the administration to impose sanctions on foreign actors that attempted to meddle in the U.S. elections, whether it be an entity, individual, or... Pauline, thank you, Pauline, the zero one cup. There we go. <laughs> I'm just going to do lyrics for each one. The order entitled imposing certain, uh, imposing certain Sanctions in the Event of Foreign Interference in the United States Election directed parts of the administration to compose reports on election interference and directs the Senate Depart uh, State Department and Treasury Department to then decide on appropriate sanctions on foreign actors. The order is not country-specific, and as a part of it, the president declared a national emergency and is required under sanctions, uh, that it's required under sanctions authority. John Bolton told reporters the executive order will not apply not only to campaign infrastructure interference, but also propaganda and misinformation. Um, their belief is, is that because he declared a national emergency about election interference, that he could now use anything he wanted to, um, um, how, where's how getting all this? What? Allison, thank you for getting the zero one F and mask. Um, where am I getting what? Is somebody questioning the, where I'm finding this stuff? All this is getting Hal Reddish. Oh, Red Bullish. Oh, I see. Because I'm re I'm reading too fast. Red Bull gives you wings. I have, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I had a, um, I had a protein shake right before I went on the air, but that's it. This is the result of, uh, of starving myself, essentially. Okay. So, uh, until such time as I eat my, you know, I have my protein, then I have my meal after the show. Ah, that's too much information. These laws were, in the view of Powell and Flynn and others, the key to unlocking extraordinary powers for Trump to stay in office beyond January 20th. Their theory, and by the way, this is why they believe that March 4th is going to be the day when, when Trump gets in office because he's going to go in and make the case. And not only is he going to not lose the impeachment trial, he's going to win proving that he actually had the election stolen from him and seize the presidency. They believe this, period. Um, um, it, it was remarkable that the president had deteriorated to such an extent that, is, that this fight in the Oval Office between senior White House officials and radical conspiracies was even taking place. And I love this. How exactly are you going to do this? An exasperated Hirschman asked again later in the conversation. Newman again cited the 2018 executive order, which prompted Hirschman to question out loud whether she was even a lawyer. Then Byrne chimed in. These are guys with big guns and badges who can get these things. Hirschman couldn't, be Hirschman couldn't believe it. What are you, three years old? <laughs> Lyons, the staff secretary, told the president that the executive order Powell and Flynn were citing did not give him the authority they claimed it did to seize voting machines. Morgan, the campaign lawyer, also expressed skepticism about the idea of evoking national security emergency powers. To help adjudicate, Trump then patched in the national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, on speakerphone. Trump's personal assistant brought O'Brien into the call with no explanation of what madness would await him. <laughs> it does sound a bit like a Queen's Rec riff off of, uh, off of Q2K. Oh, Anonymous, you're, you're going to fill up your... Are you giving these as gifts? That's lovely. Or someone just being anonymous, and it always says anonymous, I think. That's fascinating. I right, we'll find out. O'Brien said very little in the shorter time. Uh, he was on the call, but in, oh, Silas, oh, an unsweet tank top. That's nice. That's a good one to work out in. Um, he was on the call, but intervened uh, at one point to say he saw no evidence to support Powell's notion of declaring a national emergency to seize voting machines. There was so much fiery crosstalk, it was hard for anyone on the telephone to follow the conversation. Trump expressed skepticism at various points about Powell's theories, but he said, at least she's out there fighting. Yeah, at least. The discussion shifted from Dominion, uh, Dominion voting machines to a conversation about appointing Powell as a special counsel inside the government to investigate voter fraud. She wanted a top secret security clearance and access to confidential voter information. You think? Lyons told Trump he couldn't appoint Powell as a special counsel at the Justice Department because this was an attorney a general appointment. Lyons, Cipollone, and Hirschman, in fact, the entire senior White House staff were, uh, who were aware of this idea, were all vehemently opposed to Powell becoming a special counsel anywhere in the government. By this point, Trump had patched onto the call with his personal lawyer, Giuliani, and White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows. Meadows indicated that he was trying to wrap his mind around what exactly Powell's role would entail. He told Powell she would have to fill out the S SF-86 questionnaire before starting as, uh, as special counsel. Like, come on. 
This was seen as a delaying tactic. The sense in the room was that Trump might actually greenlight this extraordinary proposal. At its, at, so Meadows was trying to talk him down by going, there's some paperwork. We'll talk about it next week. At its essence, Powell's crew's argument to the president was this. We have the real information. These people, your White House staff, don't believe in the truth. They're liars and quitters. They're not willing to fight for you because they don't want their, to get their hands dirty. Put us in charge. Let us take control of everything. We'll prove to you what we've been saying is right. We won't quit. We'll fight. We're willing to fight for your presidency. And on some level, this argument was music to Trump's ears. He was desperate. Powell and her team were the only people willing to tell him what they wanted to hear. And and that a path to stay in power in the White House remained. The, uh, the Oval Office portion of the meeting had dragged on for nearly three hours, creeping beyond 9 p.m. The arguments became so heated that even Giuliani, still on the phone, at one point told everybody to calm down. And one participant later recalled, when Rudy's the voice of reason, you know the meeting's not going well. Giuliani told Trump he was going to come over to the White House. The president, having got, forgotten about the others on the line, hung up and cut multiple people off on the call. <laughs> I'm going to come over there. Okay, cut, click. And just shuts off everybody who wasn't in the room. Ma Meadows, his other attorney. Oh, nice. That's uh, Celere Veris, which is the 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 uh, oath on there is uh, is actually my family crest's oath. So cool. Um, Trump sat behind Powell in armchairs facing the door, separated by a round wood antique table. Now we're settling in. Giuliani sat in. Uh, this is afterwards. They followed up. Uh, let's see. Um, Hirschman, Cipollone, Lyons left the Oval Office, but soon discovered that Powell and Entourage, uh, Powell Entourage, the Powell Entourage, sorry, had made their way to the president's residence. They followed him upstairs to the yellow Oval Room, Trump's living room, where they were joined by Giuliani and Meadows. Oh, God, this is just going to get worse. My God. Um, Trump sat beside Powell in uh, armchairs facing the door. Separated by a round a wooden antique table, Giuliani sat in an armchair to the right of them while Byrne and Meadows sat on a couch. Byrne wolfed down pigs in a blanket and little meatballs on toothpicks that the staff had set on the coffee table. <laughs> oh. Hirschman was primed to brawl and ready to dump on Powell. It had been a long day. Rudy, he said, turning Giuliani, Sydney was just in the Oval Office telling the president, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Right, Sydney? Why don't you tell Rudy to his face? Eric. Really, it's not appropriate. Trump replied curtly. <laughs> What's not appropriate? Hirschman shot back, turning to Powell. He said, why don't you repeat to Rudy what you just told the president in the Oval Office, that he has no idea about the case and that he only just began to understand it a few hours ago. Three days later, Giuliani would publicly distance himself from Powell, telling Newsmax that Powell did not represent the president and that whatever she's talking about, it's her own opinions. It did not take long for the yelling to start again. They were now in hour four. Billy! Much love to you, brother. Big hug. Um, the uh, Now it was Meadows' turn, blasting Flynn for trashing him and accusing him of being a quitter. Don't you dare challenge me about whether or not I'm supportive of the president and working hard, Meadows shouted, reminding Flynn that he defended him during his legal troubles. Trump and Cipollone, who frequently butted heads, went at it too over whether the administration had the authority to do what Powell was proposing. This is fucking crazy. Aw, oh, Benny Loco. Nice. I didn't even know there was a lime green mug. That's amazing. <laughs> I guess you can change the colors yourself. That's cool. Um, Powell at one point turned to lines and demanded, why are you speaking? Are you still employed here? The staff secretary who had already resigned laughed and joked, well, I guess I'm here until midnight. It was after midnight by the time the White House officially said, uh, finally said their piece. They left that night fully prepared for the mad possibility Trump might still name Sidney Powell special counsel. You have our advice, they told the president before walking out. You decide who to listen to. Damn. 